Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can use templating in your server-side Swift apps. We're using Vapor and Leaf. First of all, what is templating? Well, often when you're writing web apps, you want to return HTML or some other type of content where you have a template where at certain parts of the template, you want to replace that data with dynamic data. As a simple example, imagine you have a HTML template where at a certain point you want to say hi and then the user's name. In this screencast, we're going to explore templating using a popular open source server-side Swift framework called Vapor. Vapor supports multiple templating engines, including Mustache, Stencil, and Leaf. Today, we're going to use Leaf because it was built specifically for Vapor and was built with the ground up with Swift 3, but you can apply what you learned today to any templating language you choose. Let's dive in and create a simple hello world with templating. I've already got the Swift 3 tool chain, Vapor, and the Vapor toolbox installed. So I'll create a new Vapor project with Vapor new hello templating. Switch to the directory and create an Xcode project with Vapor Xcode. If you look at the template, you'll see that there is a resources views directory. This is where you should store your templates. I'll create a new template file by adding a file to this folder and calling it hello.leaf. We're using the leaf extension because that's the default extension for the leaf templating engine. If you wanted to use mustache, you'd use the extension mustache, for example. Let's start by returning some basic HTML without any parameters to replace. We'll do that next. Note that you can return anything. It doesn't necessarily need to be HTML. Also, to get syntax highlighting, just select Editor, Syntax Coloring, HTML. Okay, now let's set up a route in Vapor that will return this template. To do this, we need to call drop.get to handle a get request and choose template1 for the path. To return this template, we use drop.view.make and pass in the name of the template, hello in this case. We don't need to put the extension if we're using leaf. Build and run and check it out. We've got HTML. Even though what we've done so far is very basic, we already have some benefit because it's much nicer to have our HTML off in a separate file rather than cluttering up our controller code. But the real power of templating comes when you fill in placeholders with dynamic data. So let's give that a try. Instead of saying hello world, I want this page to say hello and then the user's name. To do this, I simply add a placeholder where I want the user's name. Hashtag, open parentheses, name, close parentheses. Back in main.swift, I have to pass in some data to the templating engine. Usually you'd get this from a database, but to keep things simple, I'll just hard code something in for now. To pass in data, I'll simply pass in a dictionary with name equals Ray, except I need to wrap this in a class called node. Think of node as a wrapper around dictionaries and other types for type safety reasons. I'll build and run, and awesome, I have dynamic data. In the previous screencast, I showed you how you can create routes that take parameters. Let's combine that idea with templating so you get the user's name from the route that you visit. I'll create a new route here that takes a string parameter and simply pass in that parameter to the template we made. Build and run and let's try this with a dynamic name. It works. Replacing placeholders in your page is great, but often you have a collection of items that you want to loop through. For example, on a blog, you might have a collection of posts. On a Twitter clone, you might have a collection of tweets and so on. Well, there's good news. Leaf also supports looping through collections of data using a tag that's called, can you guess, loop. I'll create a new template here called hello2.leaf and copy in the same HTML from earlier. Except this time, let's assume we're passed in a collection of users and for each one you want to print out their name. To do this, I'll add the loop tag, pass the name of the collection I'm expecting, and as the second parameter, I'll pass in a variable name that I can reference for each item in the collection. We'll call it user, so I need to update the placeholder tag to that reference as well. Back in main.swift, now instead of passing in a single value, we need to pass in a dictionary. Vapor has overloaded a normal Swift dictionary with a convenience method that converts it to that node wrapper that I mentioned earlier. So let's use that and then pass it in. I'll build and run. And nice, now I see a collection of users. Usually when you have a collection of data like this, each element has more than one property. For example, a user might have a name and an email address. To show you what I mean, I'll create a new route here that has users with both names and email addresses. 
I'll then create a new template to display this based on the previous template. It's the same as before, except to access the property within each user, you just use the variable for each item, user in this case, and then put dot and the property you want to access. So user.name and user.email. Build and run. And nice, we've got a dynamic collection of data. Often when you're creating templates like this, you have a lot of repeated elements. For example, all of the templates we've created so far have the same basic HTML structure. It would be terrible if we created 100 of these and then our designer came by with a redesign. We'd have a lot of work on our hands. As with all programming, the general rule is don't repeat yourself. And luckily, Leaf makes this easy with four tags, extend, embed, import, and export. Let's take a look. Let's say you have a common element that you use on a lot of your templates. For example, all of our templates so far have a title that says hello world. So let's put that in a separate reusable file called title.leaf. Now we can modify our other templates to include this reusable element with the embed tag. Simply pass in the name of the leaf file and it will effectively include its content in that spot. If I build and run, it works as usual. Moving back to hello3.leaf, there's a lot of other repeated elements here. You could imagine creating a template for the top part of the page and maybe another for the bottom, but that wouldn't be very clean because sometimes we'd have tags that open in one template and close in another, and that's just a recipe for a disaster. So Leaf provides an alternative method of reusing files. It works the other way around. You create a master template that has a placeholder for where the other pages will include content. Let's create a new master.leaf that has the same basic HTML structure, except I'll replace the head section and the body section with the import for areas each page will fill in, the head and the body. Now I can modify hello3.leaf. First, I'll note that I want to extend the master.leaf template by using the extend tag. Then I'll fill in each section of the master template by using the export tag to fill in the piece of that page. As you can see, the result is pretty clean, and now we only have to fill in what's specific to this page. Note that I could have included the title in the master template instead of embedding it like I did here, but this way you can understand both ways of doing things. And if I build and run, it still works. At this point, you know how to include data, loop through collections of data, and even combine different templates. There's two last things I wanna show you, if else statements and how to deal with raw data. Let's make a template that says either hello or goodbye based on a dynamic variable. To do this, I'll use the if tag to check if say hello is true, and an else tag otherwise. Note that the else tag has two hash symbols beforehand. I think of this as indicating that it's related to the earlier if tag. Back in main.swift, I'll create a new route, and this route will require a parameter called say hello that's either set to true or false. If it's not there, we'll throw an error. Then we will pass this parameter to the template and return it. Let's try this out. And if we pass in true, we see hello. And if we pass in false, we see goodbye. What about special characters? Let's try modifying our template to add the hashtag you are awesome at the end. If we build and run, we'll see an error because when Leaf sees a hash symbol, it thinks that you're trying to ask it to do something. To fix this, simply replace your content with the raw tag. Build and run, and it works. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should know how to create and render a template, deal with collections of data, combine templates, use if-else statements, and even deal with raw data. Now that you understand templating, I'm sure you're eager to use what you've learned here to render dynamic content pulled from a database, and that is what I'll be covering in the next Vapor screencast. Thanks for watching, and I hope this screencast helps you turn over a new leaf. I'm out.